In this section, we will talk about hypothesis test for two proportions. Two samples that are independent if the sample values from one population are not related to or naturally paired or matched with the sample values from the other population. In other words, two, pop two samples are independent if the individuals selected for one samples do not dictate which individuals are to be in a second sample. We will talk much more about this in section 10.3. Two samples are dependent, often referred to as matched pairs, if the sample values are somehow matched or related. In other words, two samples are dependent if the individuals selected in one sample are used to determine the individuals selected in the second sample. Let's uh, talk about the hypothesis test for two proportions. This is used to test a claim about two population proportions. You can look over the requirements, and we'll go over these in class. So um, first step, we need to list our null and our alternate hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is that the two population proportions are equal, or that there is no difference between the proportion of the two populations. If our alternate hypothesis is that P1 is greater than P2, then the proportion of the first population is greater than the proportion of the second population. Same thing with less than, same thing with not equal to. Here we have our, our test statistic, which we will um, use technology to find. Here are the steps to finding technology, which uh, I will walk you guys through. And then finally, we write a, a conclusion sentence. If the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. And if the p-value is greater than or equal to alpha, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Time Magazine reported uh, the results of a telephone call of 800 adult Americans. The question posed was, should the federal tax on cigarettes be raised to pay for health care reform? The survey showed that 15% of 280 smokers supported the tax, while 65% of non-smokers supported the tax. Is there sufficient evidence at the 0.05 level to conclude that the two populations, smokers and non-smokers, differ significantly with uh, respect to their opinions? Okay, so first off, let's think about what this question is claiming. We have two different populations. Our first population um, w from which we drew a sample is smokers, and the second population is non-smokers. So the sample of 280 smokers, 15% of them said they supported the tax, and 65% of non-smokers uh, from that sample supported the tax. So our null hypothesis is that the proportions of the two populations are equal, which means the same proportion of smokers support the tax as do non-smokers. In other words, the proportion of smokers and the proportion of non-smokers who support the tax is equal. Now, this just by looking at this, 15%, 65%, it seems as though, and logic would also tell us, that smokers would not want the tax raised, whereas non-smokers would want the tax raised. So logic tells us that these proportions are probably not going to be equal. But let's go through our, our hypothesis test. What is uh, What are we testing? Is there sufficient evidence at the 0 0.05 significance level to conclude that the two populations differ significantly with respect to their opinions? Now, are we talking about greater than or less than or not equal to? Well, if the dif differ, it could either be greater than or less than. In other words, P1 is not equal to P2. All we have to show is, is that the two proportions are not equal. So those are, that's our null and our alternate hypothesis. Step two, we need to calculate our test statistic. For a test statistic, we need our sample size. So for our first population, our first sample rather, uh, our n equals to 280 because we have 280 smokers. Our second um, sample is the sample of non-smokers. So we have uh, 280 smokers. So the rest of them, which will be 520 non-smokers. Okay. Now, what is the number of successes? 
number of successes in each sample? Well, if 15% of 280 smokers support the tax, then we would multiply 0 0.15 times 280 to get the number of successes. And 0.15 times 280 is equal to 42. So the number of successes for, for smokers is 42. The number of successes for non-smokers, 65% of them support. So we will have 0.65 times, point, uh, times 520, which will give us 338. Okay, so the number of successes for um, not for smokers is 42. The number of successes for non-smokers, in this case, successes um, any individual who supports the tax. We have 42 for smokers and 338 for non-smokers. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this in. Here's how we're going to plug this in. We're going to go to our um, calculators page, and we're doing an interval test, uh, so we're, uh, we're doing a significance test, and we this time we have two proportions, so we will click on two proportions. Okay, so we have two sample proportions, and we're trying to determine is the proportion of the two samples equal or is it not equal? That's, uh, that's our null and our alternate hypothesis. So in the first case, our sample size was 280 smokers, and of the 280 smokers, 15% of them supported the tax. So 15% of 280 is 42. For the non-smokers, we had, uh, there were 800 people surveyed. If 280 of them are smokers, the rest must be non-smokers. So we have 520 non-smokers. And out of the 520, 65% of them supported the tax. So that means 338 individuals supported the tax. What do we want? Do we want a confidence interval or a significance test? We want a significance test. The null value? The null value will always be zero because we are, we are saying that there is no difference between the two population proportions. So the null value for difference of proportions, if there is no difference, then the null value is going to be zero. So for two proportions, the null value will always be zero. In this case, we want a two-sided hypothesis test. So we will choose two-sided. Okay, and this gives us our test statistic, and this gives us our p-value. As you can see, we have an extremely low test statistic. So let's go back and plug this in. Our test statistic is z equals to negative 13.51, which means that we are 13 standard deviations to the left of the mean. Now keep in mind, three standard deviations away from the mean, that's 99.7% of the data. So 13 standard deviations below the mean, that probability of that will all, almost be zero. Okay, so in the third step, let's calculate the p-value. We want, if this is zero, we want the probability that um, our data is less than 13.51 standard deviations below the mean. And if you looked at the p-value from our calculator, the p-value is zero, which means the probability that this occurred by chance is almost zero. So assuming that this is true, assuming that P1 equals to P2, the probability that we observe um, the sample data by chance is almost zero. Since the p-value is less than the significance level of 0 0.05, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So in conclusion, since the p-value of zero is less than 0 0.05, which is our alpha, we will reject the null hypothesis. This means there is sufficient evidence to
support the claim that the two proportions, the two population proportions are not equal, which hopefully makes sense. It's very improbable that the same proportion of smokers and the same proportion of non-smokers are going to vote a tax on cigarettes. That is obviously going to hurt the smokers. So uh, only 15% of them in this sample are supporting the tax rates, whereas 65% of non-smokers support the tax rate. So to, to say that these proportions are equal would be false. So uh, we will do the next example in class.